Here are six mistakes ruining your Notion workflow, because most people don't struggle with productivity, they struggle with clutter. Notion is supposed to make your life simpler, but if your setup looks like a maze of widgets and disconnected pages, then it's working against you, not for you. So by the end of this video, we'll fix the six most common mistakes that I see in Notion. If you feel overwhelmed when you open up Notion, uh, you, you have a bad setup. So subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. The first mistake here is an absolute classic that I see time and time again. So this here is kind of like your typical dashboard that I see online. And the issue here is this is cognitively overwhelming. It does look very aesthetic, but it's not helping you to focus, to plan your day any better. With anything like this, your brain has to read that and think about it. And it has to do that every single time that it sees it. So basically, you're just giving your brain more stuff to think about, and that is adding to the cognitive load of the day. With the less stuff that your brain has to read and think about, obviously, the less tired it will be. And that's why overcomplicating your dashboard with too many widgets is the first notion mistake. Now, the second mistake is one that I see time and time again as a guy who looks at a lot of Notion setups. So what most people do is have something like a task database, a calendar here with like their routines or something, and then another one here, which is like a checklist of the habits, habit one, habit two, habit three. The problem with a setup like this, obviously it probably looks nicer than this, but the problem here is you have to now check your task list, then you have to check your routines, and then you have to check your habits. And most likely setups like this also have a calendar that they have to check, a separate place for maybe their fitness tracking, a separate place for their morning journal, etc. But this stuff here is all the same thing. Your tasks are the same thing as routines, because routines are just tasks, and habits, they're just tasks. If your habit here is to go for a run, guys, going for a run, that's just a task. And the more you're separating stuff in Notion, the more open loops you open in your brain, which adds unnecessary stress, because now your brain is thinking, have I checked all of these different areas? And that's why separating your different types of tasks is the second mistake I see with Notion workflows. But let's say you've been a productive person and you've put everything here in the one task dashboard, and you're just viewing this here in different views. So maybe you're using a table view and a calendar view to see your day. Well, you could save a lot of time with this next hack. Let's say you always go for a run or something like that every single day. If you always call it run, then you're going to make this very easy for yourself because what you could do here, let's just add task one, task two as an example. What you could do if you're always calling it run is use the power of filters. So what I can do here is right click on table and do duplicate. And here I'll just say run, for example. And with this run, we can filter by the name. And if you use the same naming convention every single time, such as run, that will automatically appear here in this list by filtering with that name. And obviously if you have meetings, for example, and you want to find that quickly, then you just make sure you always have the word meeting in there. That way you can duplicate this and find all of your meetings by using the same naming convention. Because the mistake that I've seen a lot is that they don't call it the same thing. They'll say chat with X, and then the next time they'll say meeting with Y, and then the next time they'll say discussion about project. By using different names here, you can't use filters with a standard naming convention. And by the way, having a standard naming convention is also really useful if you use Notion automations. Now, automations are a paid Notion feature. I have about 20 to 30 in my personal account, and I have it set up with naming conventions. So if I write REC Notion mistakes here, then it picks up on REC, and that automation gets triggered to automatically add it to the life bucket of my business but you can only set up those useful automations if you have standard naming conventions. All right, let's actually look at these here as an example. So let's say you always do a run, for example, and after every run, you like to do a little questionnaire for yourself. How did I feel, etc. So you have these questions here. Well, instead of typing it out every single time, you can use the power here of page templates. So they are not the same thing as Notion templates, such as headquarters, my premium Notion template, cough, cough, hint, hint, link in the description. A page template is a template inside of a specific database. So as an example, in headquarters, I have a journaling template, which automatically shows you all the tasks that you've completed that week. And you can set up page templates for anything. So we could do one for the run here. So you can set up page templates for anything you're doing very often. So now that this is a template, I can click away. So now when I go for my run, what I'll do is simply click on the day and click here on run. Automatically it writes run. And if you're using a bunch of properties in your database, you can automatically have these assigned as well in that template. So to use the headquarters example from before, when you click on the weekly review, that automatically gets tagged with the life bucket. By the way, if you're interested in headquarters, there's a link in the description. Now, speaking of your task list, most Notion dashboards look something like this, right? And you have this as a to-do list. This is just horrendous. You can tick these in like this, 
And honestly, there's very little point to even using something like this. Notion is it's most useful with different properties like this by using filters, by using sorting, by using groups, and by using different database layouts. But my favorite property to have for a task list here is by far a simple time tracking setup. I've tried pretty much every productivity method under the sun, and without a doubt, the most useful to me has been time tracking. Knowing exactly where your time goes will inform the decisions for your scheduling. And this isn't just to be a robot productivity machine. If I can see here, I'm not spending enough time with friends and I've spent in total 60 minutes hanging out with friends. You know what? That's a problem. And you'll only get those discoveries by having a proper time tracking setup. All right, I saved this one for last because it's uh, kind of controversial. A lot of people talk about goals, right? So everyone wants to have like a, a goal tracker or something in Notion. So we'll say run marathon as a goal and start a side hustle as a goal. You know what these here are? They're not goals. They're actually projects. And the problem is people separate goals and projects. They're the same thing. To achieve a goal, you have to do specific tasks and habits. Do you know how you achieve a project? You do specific tasks and habits. So let's stop separating our goals and projects. And to ensure we make progress, we're going to connect our projects with our tasks. So what I'll do here is just create a gallery here, and this will be a new gallery called my projects. And I'll just create these as projects like that, side hustle and run marathon. I'll just drag it in like that. What I'll do now is scroll up to my task list and click here on the plus property. And we're going to use this thing here called a relation. Now relations can be kind of scary, but these are incredibly useful for your Notion dashboard. You'll click here on the project that you want this to relate to. So my tasks, I want that to relate to this projects database. So I'll click here and I'll click here on add relation. So now when I'm working on a task, I can say, hey, which project is this to do with? So let's say run is to do with run the marathon and all of these here are to do with run marathon. And now let's tie in everything we've learned from this video. So we'll scroll down here and click on the down arrow and we're going to create a page template. And this here will be the new project template. And what I'll do here is write database and click on table view. And this here will not be an empty data source. Instead, I'm going to use this tasks database. So now I can see this task database showing up here. And on this new project page template here, we'll add a filter and say that I only want to see stuff where the project is to do with this new project. So now I'll only see the tasks that are relevant. So now I can click away. So now if I click here on run marathon and click on new project, all these run tasks are showing up here. So that's how we're using the task templates. Then what we'll do here is track our runs with our time tracker. If I go back to run marathon here, I can see this time tracker here. And what I can do is click here and say calculate and do more options and do some. So now I can see in total how much time have I spent on these runs. That's how we're tying in our time tracking. And I won't have this running on a separate database. Going for a run is simply a task. And on these project pages here, we're not adding any other widgets to confuse us. And then lastly, when we go for a run, we won't write something like sprint or jog. We will say run. That way we could set up automations that automatically tag it with the relevant project. If you want to skip the whole process of trying to build a Notion dashboard and check out headquarters, it's my premium Notion template. There's a link in the description or you can click on this video here to see the full talk.